Welcome back and Alive Now. I'm Austin Westfall. So let's talk a little bit about what happened earlier today in Florida. SpaceX, we're looking to bring Barry Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams. They're the pair of U.S. astronauts that have been in space much longer than NASA originally planned. They were planning to bring them back to Earth soon, but unfortunately, due to a hydraulic ground issue, the launch was scrubbed about 30 minutes before liftoff. Ken Kramer is here. He is the founder of Space Up Close. Ken, my understanding is that we just got an update about when exactly we may see the next launch attempt happen. What do we know? Yes, that's right. Uh, I was there at the Kennedy Space Center and for the scrub today. And uh, just as we were connecting a, a moment ago, NASA put out an updated uh, notification saying the launch is now Friday at the earliest instead of tomorrow. They were hoping for a 24-hour delay, but the problem is it's not the launch pad, but downrange, we have to have good weather for the Dragon capsule in case of an abort. And there is rain and, and high winds in that downrange abort path. So uh, they're waving off uh, until at least Friday, while they also still work on that hydraulic issue in the strong back. What that is, is that's what holds the rocket in place Okay, and it has to tilt back about five degrees or so, a uh, couple of minutes before the launch so that the rocket can lift off and not collide with that strong back. So um, that's a number of issues still to work on. And uh, it's not a really complex thing, but they have to fix it uh, until they, they launch. And uh, it's really unfortunately, we had beautiful weather, perfect weather. You, you couldn't have asked for anything better as far as the weather goes at the, the launch site and downrange also. So, um, and where is downrange, you might ask? Well, that's uh, along the Northeast Coast because it's flying uh, up to the International Space Station, about 57 degrees inclination. So that brings it along the Atlantic and then out over to Europe. So let's so, ask about, uh, I got to ask you about Butch and Sonny. And, um, yes, and Butch and Sonny are not stuck and they are not stranded. <laughs> and uh, so I keep repeating a million times. And uh, they'll just have to wait a little bit longer. But uh, they have been performing admirably. Very experienced astronauts. They even took spacewalks. They're going to go down in history now. So they'll just have to wait a little bit longer. But, you know, Butch, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Butch and Sunni, they both took spacewalks during this extended duration, eight days turned into eight months, but or nine months now. But SUNY, because of this, with the two spacewalks, now holds the female record for spacewalks for time uh, inside uh, EVA and um, inside an EVA suit, working outside the space station. So that's, that's really cool for her. She's a record holder and something she can be proud of and all Americans can be proud of. All right, how does it feel when these things get scrubbed? I've been out there before, you're out there for almost all of them. There's so much anticipation, there's a lot of excitement to watch one of these things go off, especially when there's yeah. humans inside of the capsule. What did it feel like when you heard it wasn't gonna happen today? Well, yeah, it's disappointing. I mean, I was on top of the CBS roof, okay? One of your competitors, you guys don't have a, a, a roof out there. You should get one. Um, Anyway, I started hearing this chatter at about uh, T minus 50 minutes. I went down to the press site and, and asked them. They didn't really have that much more information. It didn't seem like it would be really a showstopper. So, like I said, it's extremely disappointing. It has to be safe. It always has to be safe. So that's what NASA did. They aired on the site of uh, safety keeping those astronauts alive, because if they launch today, tomorrow, or a week from now, it really doesn't matter. And if Sunni have, and, and Butch have to stay up longer, then they'll stay up longer. It's really not a big deal, because they've got a capsule to come home. So for the humans, for the rest of us, yeah, of course it's disappointing. Like I said, the weather was gorgeous, the moon was hanging over us, and uh, we even had an ISS pass, you know, you can watch the International Space Station pass overhead sometimes and that's what happened this evening and so i mean you couldn't ask for anything better and so you know it's it's when it's an issue like this in ground support equipment 
that should have been fixed beforehand. It's kind of like really crazy and a little bit inexcusable. Uh, they should have t tested these systems out even more thoroughly. You know, they launch these rockets constantly and they wear down their, uh, their hardware. And so maybe that's what this is. And so I think they're going to have to look a little bit harder at refurbishing their ground support equipment because, you know, it's really dumb actually to have this for ground support equipment. If there was a technical issue with the rocket, yeah, we could understand that. No, no problem at all. But you know, Musk, he makes fun of other companies for, for not having their ground support ready. So I probably shouldn't even say that. But so what, what have Butch and Sonny been doing up there all this time? It's been since June that they've been up there. So what have they been busy with? Well, they've been doing science. The ISS is all about science. Okay. So they're working on, <clears throat> sorry. They're working on experiments for the human body, biology, cancer research. Really important to me. I'm a cancer researcher and a cancer survivor. And so any, any information we can get out of that to help the human species will be absolutely great. Uh, biology, chemistry, they're looking down at the earth. Okay. Looking at climate change, which is real, despite what some people say. And, um, and, and, and then out to the heavens, we're looking with the alpha magnetic spectrometer, looking to the beginning of time to see, you know, when, when was the universe formed? How did it form? We don't know exactly the answer to those questions. And that's what the ISS is helping with. It's also a proving ground. And this is really important, not just to, to carry out uh, the science every day for the um, scientists back here on earth, but a proving ground to test technologies to go to the moon and eventually to Mars. You know, when we go to Mars, it's a three year round trip. It can't fail. You can't suddenly send a supply ship or a fix to that spaceship because they can't turn around and they can't catch up if they send something. So it's got to work. And that is what the ISS is doing, testing out those technologies to make sure they are robust and reliable. First for the moon, that's easy to get back and forth, only three days to a week. But um, Mars is three years, it's about nine months to get there, one to three months stay, and then a nine months or so to come back. So everything has to function. So that's a really important um, 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 purpose of the ISS is moving yeah. around. So we've been asking our audience to uh, ask our experts questions every night. And tonight we asked them if they have any questions about the future of space launches. And, and one interesting question that kind of bounces off of what I just asked you is, how are the Boeing astronauts getting supplies? How have they been getting supplies all this time? And it pertains not just to the Boeing astronauts, but every astronaut and cosmonaut on the International Space Station. There are regular, I'm sorry, there are regular cargo ships that go up every few months. There is like three to five or six of these every year, depending on the needs. SpaceX launches the Cargo Dragon, which is the cargo version of the Crew Dragon. So they take seats out and they put in these storage racks. And in, in those racks is food, water, supplies, um, clothing. Okay, the essential things, and then also all the research experiments they want to do, spare parts, things do break down on the ISS. So that's brought up regularly by the U.S., by Russia, uh, by Japan, and um, that's why a Japanese astronaut, in fact, is on this mission, because they send cargo ships to the International Space Station. They bring many tons of supplies, three to six tons or so, depending on which cargo ship it is they're all different uh us has two the crew dragon cargo dragon i should say and the northrop grumman cygnus now that's an interesting question so you know the, the northrop grumman cygnus just had suffered an accident they were transporting it and now it, it was structurally um it was was uh, was injured and so that mission is going to be delayed so they're going to have to pull forward a mission from SpaceX and maybe from Russia, their cargo ships, to keep the uh, supply train going. Because there are no resources in space other than energy, okay? 
And when you get to the moon, yeah, then you may, can maybe have water. And when you get to Mars, you can live off uh, maybe other things there, water. But in, in the International Space Station, we have these cargo ships. A lot of them are just cylinders or capsules and loaded, like I said, and they go up every few months. So that's a really great question. And I guess we'll be seeing you on Friday. Take care. See you on Friday.